oil is really from decomposed a animals and plants, there is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well, and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shalajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And I... Uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station, so support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Joining me now is Hamid Adli. Uh, now, Hamid attends the mosque that was once attended by the shooter, Saeed Farouk. And uh, he joins me today to update us on sort of the climate of the mosque there, as well as within the Muslim community uh, in San Bernardino, California. And also, he wanted to offer up sort of a counter voice in this debate, rather than sort of the radical Islamic extremists that, you know, we're sort of starting to see there in the mainstream media. So, Hamid, thank you so much for coming on to the show and, um, you know, giving us your perspective. So tell, tell me a little bit about this mosque that you all uh, have attended and, you know, what's the climate like there now? Um, well, this mosque uh, was established about 20 years ago, um, and it, it, it's a mosque um, created in an area back then. There wasn't a lot of mosques here to, to create a place where Muslims can go and worship. And I went there from, from a child from ever since third grade until now, which I'm 30 years old. And um, the climate there, I'd say right now, is a little on edge, a little tense, because there's been um, a lot of like like threats against the mosque, like people have been, been leaving messages on the phone and um, just been, you know, mm -hmm. with the whole media frenzy, it was kind of eye-opening for myself to, to, to see, you know, such a thing going on right now. Right. Yeah, and we actually interviewed a friend of yours who uh, was acquainted with the shooter um, they weren't, you know, close friends, but obviously through the mosque there, they were able to meet. Uh, he helped him throw a party, I guess, or arrange some type of party for his marriage. Um, and he actually said that the mosque goers were held at gunpoint at at one point in this. Um, so, you know, obviously there's sort of this prejudice that this radicalization must come from the mosques. So... Mm -hmm. What is happening there with, like, I guess the leadership? What sort of tone are they taking? What are the religious leaders saying about Islamic extremism? Well, obviously, you know, an act like this, you know, it, you know, we don't really consider this uh, this guy to be, you know, Muslim. Obviously, this, this guy was an isolated case, a mental head case. This guy had some mental illness. And the leadership, the management is um, trying to explain to the public and to the media, they had a press conference last Friday, that look, you know, we, we are not like this person. You know, our religion is a religion of peace. Um, you know, we, we're taught, you know, not, not to do these type of things, obviously. 
But, um, you know, the leadership is trying to explain to the public that really doesn't understand too much about Islam. Look, you know, these are the teachings of Islam, and we are not, we do not support these type of behavior and, and a type of person like this. This is obviously a radical. This person was an isolated case. And it doesn't represent, you know, the Muslims that li live in the United States. Right. Uh, well, and I can understand that because obviously you have people trying to lump uh, all gun owners in when there's an incident, uh, something like that, which is certainly not fair, uh, especially considering there's like more than a billion Muslims in the world. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's this is why it's a little bit difficult for those of us sort of on the outside. Um, for instance, th there was that hashtag that went viral this past weekend um, with the attempted attack there in London. Um, mm -hmm. there, the hashtag, you ain't no Muslim, bruv, kind of went viral. And it, yeah. really, it was put out there as a show of solidarity. It was yeah. supposed to be, you know, this time to just show, you know, this is this person does not represent us. This is not, um, you know, what our religion is about. But then they had people, um, Islamic commentators basically saying, hey, well, you can't say that because that is illegal under Sharia law to to say that someone has left the religion. They, what is it? Tak takfir? Uh, yeah, tafsir, Sharia, those type of things. Yeah. And yeah, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get, you know, like I said, there's different types of Muslims in the world. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's like, just like there's different types of people. So you might get one segment, you know, it's like a spectrum, you know, mm -hmm. you might have people on this side of the spectrum that might be a little cuckoo. And then you got people <laughs> on this side of the spectrum, which are, you know, complete, you know, peaceful and, and you know, American loving, just, you know, want freedom. Um, but, you know, you're going to get people that obviously you know, might be a scholar or might, might be a one spectrum, just like the political spectrum of different uh, groups, you know, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, Tea Party. You're going to get, you know, one type of Muslim scholar say one thing, and then you might have a different, you know, uh, you know Muslims that are like in the pop culture, uh, you know, say, hey, you ain't no Muslim, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it, it, this is just something, I think that that's more of a cultural, social, um, you know, interaction that you're seeing there. Mm-hmm. But, which uh, will, of which, you know, what I could think, obviously, these are younger people, you know, yeah. you're an American citizen. So I, you know, I'm assuming that you kind of have a little bit of a different ideology than someone who maybe was raised in, in another country under a completely different type of, oh, of uh, government and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I can see where that kind of comes in. Now, what about, you know, I know a lot of people are going to be saying this in the comment section because they always do whenever, you know, we try to talk to people about, you know, get all sides of the story. And they say that um, Muslims are permitted to lie to non-believers if it furthers um, Islam. So there's two types of uh, lies, I guess, that are permitted um, in certain circumstances. And it they say it's, it's to gain the trust of non-believers in order to draw out their vulnerability and defeat them. So people are yeah. always like, we're just not gonna believe you whatever you say. Yeah. What about that? Um, you know, something like that, you know, you, you have to look at when something like that was, was revealed. A lot of these things you look at were revealed in a time of, um, you know, war or a time of battle like thousand years ago. You know, it, it, it might have been revealed, um, you know, in, in a political political climate at a time when a certain um, sect or group was trying to um, impose on another group or possibly scholars at a certain time were, were saying this. So, you know, I'd have to go and look. I, I'm not too familiar with that specific. Um, um. Well, this is something that I know gets brought up a lot, particularly with, um, you know, now with ISIS saying that they're going to be sending in refugees mm -hmm. um, or sending in people with along with the refugees to sort of exploit that crisis. And they can lie and say they're Syrian or they can lie in this because it's all part of like this global jihad. Um, yeah. So that's something that concerns a lot of people because they yeah. just you know, they don't know if, if this is part of the whole plan to kind of play on people's um, compassion um, or understanding or whatever, and they're, you know, make them vulnerable, which, you know, obviously I know you can't speak for a billion people out yeah. there, but I know there are a lot of people that would just, you know, they would kind of throw that out there. So how, yeah. how do you feel like with uh, Donald Trump's recent comments coming out saying, you know, recent Pew polls say 51% of American uh, Muslims here believe that Sharia law should be allowed uh, rather than, you know, the constitutional law. Um, and also that was it about 20 something percent 
believe that killing Americans on U.S. soil is okay as part of the global jihad. Does that astonish you to hear that that's yeah. what's going on? Or yeah, that, yeah, that, that that that's bad. And, and I'd, I'd like to look at the, the, the who was polled in that again. It might have been a, a segment, you know, a certain radical segment. But no, that that's something that we do not believe. I was taught number one not to lie, and um, you know number two you do not you know you do not kill people in a, in a foreign land that you are you are living, and the, the law of that land is supreme, uh, is what I was taught. So um, you know yeah like you were saying before you know it's it's <clears throat> like the whole gun owner thing and you know what Trump was saying um, you know it is it is a constitutional right to bear arms, but I like to say it's also a constitutional right you know the freedom of religion. So you know, that that's what I would say, say to Trump and, and his uh, particular comments that he's making. Of course, he's entitled to his opinion. And, uh, you know, when you're you know, when I go on the Internet, you know, I see a lot of negative uh, documentaries and, 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 and things about Muslims, you know, showing a certain segment of the Muslims. You know, they like they take a camera and they go to a protest in like, you know, the Middle East somewhere where people are angry about something and they, they, they record them and then they try to ge they take that and generalize all Muslims and someone, you know, sitting in the Midwest or in some in some state that has never met a Muslim will see that and constantly seeing this message, this negative message, obviously I can understand where they're coming from because they're constantly seeing this negative image of this guy that's being angry and he looks like he, he wants to, you know, do something. Right. But, well, um, it's just like, you know, people who have never actually met a black person in real life and all they know is what they see in rap videos or whatever. And so they have a certain uh, image of yeah. that culture. So I completely agree with you. I think that is, you know, why it is so important. Find out after the break what Hamid says the Muslim community thinks about being asked to police themselves in order to counter this radicalization. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. Just reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for president. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. So just very quickly, I know that you wanted to give out your email address and, and your main position with coming here is because you want to reach the youth. And I think that that's so important because for whatever reason, young people are the ones that are being radicalized. And I guess it is because of social media. 
Uh, yes, yes, um, definitely. You know, you know, I 